Well, hello, and welcome back to another scary, scary edition of Ghost Stories Told from the South. I am your host, Stephen LaBooth, and I got some skilly, skilly stuff for you today, boys and girls. <laughs> How is everybody doing today? I am doing awesome. I hope you are too. And it's going to be a great, great day. A great day for telling some stories. I like that. I really cut back the... Wow, didn't know I could do that. Anyways, I'm still... uh learning that stuff like I said and I just uh found out the way to cut out more of my uh white noise you know cut out more of my uh background stuff so I hope the recordings are good and sorry if I slip up and f up words sometimes guys but I want to say thank you for being a loyal listener and thank you to all the newcomers you're awesome guys Belly, belly, belly awesome. Well, I ain't going to sit here and ramble and ramble and talk. I'm going to just get on with the stuff, guys. We got some good stuff for you today. We got three stories to cover. <coughs> they seem like they're going to be pretty juicy. So, without further ado, let's get on with the stories. You know the routine, man. Go stories. Get that fire going. Get you a nice warm blankie. And uh, cozy up by the fire with some hot tea or cocoa or whatever you prefer to drink. But let's get ready to be scared. <laughs> All right. Our first story is Pro Provaligio Island. Provaligio Island in Italy. You might have heard about this. They've covered it on ghost stories. Not ghost stories, but ghost adventurers. And some other uh, paranormal shows that they have out there. So, let's get on with it. Okay, here is a brief history of Pavilingo... Island. Pravilingo Island dates back as far as the year of 421 A.D. and can be found off the west end of Leto de Venese. It is made from three separate islands, one of which is purely vegetation and the other two resemble Venice by the construction of wooden pillars. The smallest of the islands is in octagon shape and was used as a small fort to protect the island and as a stop off before reaching Venice. Today the island is completely abandoned with the largest of the islands housing a few declarate buildings. During the 9th century, the island served as home for many Padua and es, es, es refugees. But in 1379, when Venice and, and Constadares from Prov Provegla came under attack by Ganya during the Chico War. The inhabitants were forced to flee to a different island, Guan, Gu, uh, Gandisa, leading the abandon, leading to the abandonment of Pro, Provolonga Island. <coughs> In 1776, the island came under the jurisdiction of the local public health office during the island into a turn the island into a form of custom control area and in 1793 two ships that had stopped 
for checks at the island were found to be condemned with bombonic with the bombonic plague and this was when the island became a smorgasbord of darkness and frightening tales the tales that plague the Provolone, Provoliga Island. Two ships that landed at the island, condemned with a black death, sealed the island's fate. It was then used as a dumping ground for those infected, dead and dying. Those who scummed, who scrummed to the uh, privilege in Venice were transported to the island because living dead bodies riddled with this disease would have been catastrophic effect, had, would have had catastrophic effects on Venice with it being an island itself. <coughs> the bodies were loaded into a ship and taken over to, pro, to the island along with those already infected. They were dumped into, dumped into large, deep pits known as death pits, and with these became full. They, when these became full, they were set a lot to cover over the dirt. So basically, when they got full, they'd just cover up the holes and make another mass grave. The amount of dead said to have been buried or buried on the island varies from different sources. But it's believed to be around 100,000 to 160,000 due to its claim that 50% of the island's soil is human ash and that the island still smells of burnt human remains. The torturous doctors. In the 20th century, once the plague had subsided, the buildings on the island were transformed into a physical hospital base there are reports of doctors who due to the directly natural nature of the island and the buildings was able to create its patients to treat its patients however it saw fit so basically it would treat the patients how they seen fit how that doctor did which led to more suffering and unwarranted torture benounced upon the patients. Well, because back then, they didn't really know facts, facts. They just would experiment on how to get rid of this or that disease on people without knowing what was going to happen. <coughs> so, one doctor, doctor in particular was found of the idea of lobotomies. Lobotomies are freaking, I don't understand how these people thought that this would work. They thought if they got a, like an iron stainless steel spike and ran it in the corner of your eye, they would run it and run it up your head and kind of do like a windshield wiper. Well, they would sit there and do that, and they was wiping and thinking they was clearing the cobwebs out of someone's head, but in fact, they was doing more damage. They was cutting off nerve, en nerve endings and all that, so... After people got lobotomy, lobotomies, they were pretty effed up after that. Anyways, his idea of lobotomies and believe that they could cut mental illness. Because that's why people did it. And like I said, back then people didn't have facts. They had theories and they'd try. They'd use people as guinea pigs. Anyways, lobotomies and believe that they could cure mental, il mental illness. It is said that he performed its violent act on several unwilling patients. The doctor is also said to have res re to have reserved the bell tower for his favorite patients, but it is still not internally sure what suffering he may have caused those unlucky enough to be his con considered his favorite patients so if he took a liking to you he would experiment on you more and more so i think i'd be like i hope this doctor don't like me 
Legend says that the doctor scubbed his own madness and jumped from the bell tower to his death in, in the 1930s. Although some sources state that he was thrown from the bell tower by his patients, which makes sense. I mean, when you're torturing people like that, you ain't going to get away with it for long. There is even a rumor that he, that the fall didn't kill the doctor, but a mysterious fog that emulated from the uh, ground choked him to death before reciting back to his to earth. The ghost of the island. The history of the island is incredibly dark, riddled with hundreds of thousands of people who lost their lives either from Honduras diseases or horrendous diseases are at the hands of doctors and psychiatric people so it do, so it isn't that surprising that the island has claimed to be very haunted Fisher, fishermen still refuse to go to the island to this day due to the corrosion of death or the corrosion of the earth over time graves or pits became in and curved and bones were often caught in their fishing nets oh my galanta yeah i see why they don't want to fish there there are also claims to hear these screams of the asylum patients along with ringing of the bell from the uh, bell tower however the bell has long since been removed. It ha It is said that the doctor may have jumped from the bell tower after going insane due to the torment be uh, bestowed on him by the spirits of the plagued victims. There is also a little girl ghost called Little Maria who is thought to be a uh, plagued plague victim and has been seen and heard wailing as she ro uh, roams the uh, beach. Those who visit the island often claim to feel, like, feel as though they are being followed and can even become overwhelmed with emotions upon arrival, fleeing heavy with dread and sorrow. The entrance to the hospital brings with it its own horror story, as in the entire hospital. You need to crawl, though one of the, anyway, one of the, uh, oh, okay. It says you need to crawl through one of the cremation machines. I don't think I would do that. I wouldn't crawl through it. Sometimes people see shadows streaking across the walls, and a young female spirit has been seen. She is apparently terrified of the doctor that used to perform sickness experiments, sickening experiments on his patients. <coughs> All right, the island today. The island today remains abandoned and is owned by the state, meaning that you need special permission to venture on the island. Permission is usually given if the uh, reason to visit is based on research, photography projects, and filming. Most of these structures that once stood heavy now are completely crumbling, leaving any remaining structure unsafe to explore. Yet it does not stop thrill seekers and those who are drawn to the island to go anyway. It would be a stretch to believe that the island has become the island of many spirits due to the amount of suffering and death that happened on its, on its soil. A place that has been home to such dark times has surely left a mark on the island that is picked up on by those who visit. 
This island is a cool place to research and talk about. I've seen all the, uh, a lot of the stuff that people have done on TV with it, and that place is, uh, yeah, it's, it's got a lot of uh, happening stuff in there, a lot of happening stuff. All right, let's get ready for our next one. Our next one is Chateau de Bresco in France. Adventure seekers are drawn to Chateau de Brisca de Brassac. There we go. Brassac. Brassac. Chateau de Brassac, which is tucked away in the scenic Loire Valley of France. By its by its beauty and otherworldly charm, the Imposing seven-story castle, well known for its frightening legends and ghostly past, and her and enthralls people who enjoy unique travel. Because of its dark background, which includes a horrifying double murder that adds to its mystery, this the uh, the castle is a must-visit location for both history buffs and thrill seekers. In this enchanted fortress, visitors can explore the uh, halls and the beautiful gardens on the place and the secret corridors while taking in the era, the aura of the beautiful scenery. Chateau de Bras Brasac is most visited for anyone willing to venture into the unknown because of its fla uh Face, fast, fat, blah, because of its fantastic past, which includes ghostly apparitions and terrifying legends. All right, so let's get on with it. The historical castle to haunted castle, located in the enchanting Loire Valley of France, the Chateau de Bresca is a stunning testament to the to the grounds and the uh, beauty of uh, the French architect. The Counts of Ajoie built the architectural marvel in the 11th century. Its early structure was a formidable fortress designed to protect the region from invaders. However, the chateau we see today owes much of its splendor to Paré, Paré de Bries, a wealthy nobleman who in the 15th century reconstructed, the trans, reconstructed and transformed it into a luxurious residence. The history of this haunted, ho haunted hotel, <laughs> history of this haunted castle is not just about architectural or architectural splendor and noble and noble uh, legends it is also rich with personal dramatic events and mis mysterious events the chateau has been a stage for many tales of love and betrayal and tragedy and tragedy which generation adding its with okay which with each generation <laughs> adding its own chapter to the story in its era the noble lived in opulence but under considerate se serenity and pressure Marri marriages were often arranged for a potential for political alliances rather than love, leading to many secret affairs and hidden passions. The discovery of such an affair, especially among high-ranking nobles, could lead to scandal, disgrace, and even violence, as seen in the case of the Green Lady. Aside from 
the well-known legend of the Green Lady. There are other events that have contributed to the Chateau's reputation Excuse me, as a haunted estate. For instance, during the French Revolution, the castle was a site of considerable strife. Aristocrats fleeing from the revolution forces uh, sought refuge within the walls. Some were captured and, ex and executed on the grounds, their lives violently cut short, leaving behind a legacy of unrest. The violent, violent upheaval of revolution, what is whispered ex exhaustions and imprisonments, left deep Im imprinted on the place like chateau, like the, the chateau, where the walls seem to absorb the sorrow and fear of those turbulent of those turbulent times. Additionally, during the haunt the hundred years the hundred years war, the chateau's strategically importance made it a target for siege and battles. The bloodshed and turmoil of those conflicts have left their mark on the castle, which many many believe that the spirits of fallen soldiers will roam the hall will of falling soldiers were on the hall. The cultural beliefs of the time forced a strong connection between untimely deaths and recent re and restless spirits. It was widely held that those who met violent or unjust ends were doomed to wander as ghosts seeking resolution or revenge. In France, the belief in ghosts and spirits was deeply ingrained in the culture. Folklore often spoke of haunted places where the boundary between the living and the dead was thin, particularly in locations with a history of violence and tragedy. The Chateau, with its numerous tales of betrayal, of betrayal and war and execution fits the mold perfectly. The combination of its historical signification and the, and the numerous supernatural occurrences reported there has cemented its status as one of France's most haunted castles. The legend of the Green Lady and other restless spirits continue to capture the continue to capture and in uh, intrigue, drawing visitors who seek to experience its airy charm and rich history firsthand. The thrill seeking allure. As you explore the hills and chambers of the chateau, you are transported back in time. Each room adorned with lavish tapestries and expensive furnishings whispers tales of grand f of a grand feast royal vi royal visits and and uh, intimate moments of daily life the thick stone walls hold se hold secrets that have been passed down through generation and it's impossible to know a it's impossible not to feel a sense of Oh, adventure and wonder as you walk through its historic moment monuments. I mean, but the true is but the true tale of the chateau lies just in its in its history. In the legends that surround it, one of the most enduring and intruding tales is that of the Green Lady, a spiritual feature said to haunt the uh, castle halls. The Legend of the Green Lady The Green Lady of La Dame Farche, Farche is one of the most famous ghosts in France. According to the legend, she's the spirit of Charlotte de Bresse, the intel intelligent Oh, the uh, 
illegitimate daughter of oh the illegitimate daughter <coughs> of King Charles of I don't know eighth I guess and his mistresses oh and his mistress Angus Sorrel Charlotte was married to Jacquel's de Bries, a nobleman and the owner of Studio 51. No, I'm just kidding. And the owner of Chateau de Briscoe. Their marriage was for was far from happy, and Charlotte soon found solace in the arms of another man. On one faithful faithful night, Jacquel's Jaquels, anyways, discovered Charlotte's infinite in in infinity, and in a fit of rage, murdered both her and her lover. From that moment on, it is said that Charlotte's restless restless spirit has haunted the castle. She is often seen wearing a green dress, wandering the halls and corridors. Her mournful walls wails echoing through the night visitors res, res, uh, visitors and residents alike have reported numerous sightings of the green lady some of them seen her ghost figure standing at the foot of their bed while others have heard her swall her sorrowful full cries em emating from the uh, walls Despite her tragic past, the Green Lady is not considered a mean spirit. Rather, she is a reminder of the castle's tumulant, tur oh wait, turbulent history and the enduring power of love and betrayal. Well, because back then, you know, like they said, a lot of marriages got put together because of political gains and, oh, well, if we marry... It's fair. It's family marries its family. Oh, it'd be so big, you know. So, a lot of times there wasn't any true love. It was just like you're marrying this person. The mist, the mysteries, destinations. The chateau is more than just a castle. It is a living testament to the rich tapestry of the of French history and legend. It's towering. It's towering. Spears, a grand halls balcony, or beckon visitors to step back in time and Im immerse themselves in its stories. Whether you are down by its historical signific signification or artificial splendors or haunting tales of the Green Lady, a visit to the Chateau is an adventure perfect for the thrill seeker. So, if you're ever around France, go check out that place and tell me about it. Uh, sorry about that. I was getting a drink. <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen. Looks like this is our last story of the session. All right, the last story is the crumbling, the crumbling road goal experience. Belfast. Crumbling road goal, also known as HM Prison Belfast. Excuse me. In the crumb is a former prison in Belfast with an eerie and dark history. The Grade A list building is now a visitor's attraction where you can tour the prison and learn about the executions that took place here. Much like Nottingham. Nottingham Galleries of Justice, Grumbling Road goal really surprised me. I visited visited it on a whim 
on a whim on a recent weekend in Belfast, but wasn't expected much. I'd, I'd known the uh, former jail had a dark history of executions and hauntings, but I assume there wasn't anything dark to see or experience without booking, in, booking into a ghost tour or investigation. However, however, Crumble Road Goal is now an amazing and immersive historic visitor's experience where you can tour the building at your own pace and learn about its past with interactive ex exhibits. With the history of so many executions and terrible living conditions for prisoners, the building itself of months, an era, an eerie and sad atmosphere. It's the perfect location for morbid tourists like me and anyone else interested in dark tourism destinations. A brief history of Crumbling Road Go. Crumbling Road Go's history stretches as far back as 1841, when the prison was first designed. <clears throat> by Charles Lanyon. Charles actually based the unique layout of the prison on Paytonville Prison in London. Construction began in 1843, and the prison first opened the doors in 1845, ready to allow prisoners by the summer of that year. The first execution took place in 1854. Robert Henry O'Neill, a soldier, his body and 14 others are still interned in unmarked graves within the grounds of the uh, goal. In 1901, a new stone execution chamber was built and used for the first time. The last execution took place in the 21st century, December December of 1961, which was Robert McDallery. Finally, the prison closed during 1996. So this prison was open for more than well over 100 years. And that's crazy. Yes, considering, you know how long it stood there and was used. It was 1854-55 is when it opened and it closed in 1996. That's crazy. During its years of operating, the prison saw 17 men executed. Suffocating, suffocating was also imprisonment in the goal and 52 prisoners managed to escape. The Crumbling Road Goal Experience We took a self-guided tour of the Crumbling Road Goal on a very dull and rainy day in Belfast. The weather currently matched the atmosphere inside the prison. The experience began with a brief introduction to the uh, building and its, his, and its history throughout the years. Then, entry into the ex experience is a staggered is staggered with a short but ordinary funny introduction video, where our small group are met by a judge who deems us guilty. There is an actor who seems almost too happy to see you to see us guilty. However, and however, and stares into the camera at all times, nobling and uh, nod, nodding or nodding and smiling at the and smiling at the thought of you being locked up. It is, however, <coughs> the only fun, funny part of the experience. We then explored at our own pace. First up was the tunnel, 
a long, long, dark underground tunnel that links the building to the courthouse across the street. Though you can only explore halfway down the tunnel, it's very dark and spooky. I definitely felt a little unease heading down there. Next, we explored the main area of the prison, which was the Goal Central, which leads off to the different wings of the goal. Crumbling... Crumbling Goal is unique in the way that it's laid out was based on that of Pentonville Prison in London. Considering consider consisting of a central hall with four uh, raiding uh, wings. The design kept the prisoners isolated while allow uh, while allowing staff to keep watch from their positions. After we were allowed to visit the C wing, which consists of cells such as historic holding cells and hangman cells each cell is accessible today is accessible today and each tells a different story or signifies a different part of history within the prison one cell recreates exactly how this cell looked when the goal was in operation. With two or more inmates packed tightly together in this small room. Another shared a lot of history about the executions that took place there. Much to my delight, there was a cell dubbed the paranormal cell, but it was unfortunately closed. I think it must be a new in its construction as a crumbling road goal does have a very paranormal history. Executions at the crumbling road goal. In total, 17 prisoners were executed by hanging at the prison. Originally, the goal did not have gallows and executions took place in the public view. A construction chamber was created in 1901 where hanging took place until the last execution in 1961. The, condiment, the condemned man's cell in the hangman's cell. Towards the end of the experience, Visitors have the op option to visit the condemned cell. This sad and dark cell is where the uh, executed prisoners spent their last night, which was a tiny bed inside of a sm small oh small bed with uh, inside a small chair and desk. The room was shared with prisoners and two guards at all times in case they attempted suicide. Tragically, a prisoner would experience a last meal and a long and captivative walk to the gallows on the day of their execution. However, at Crumbling Road Go, their room led straight to the site of their death. On the day of the uh, prison, on the day of the prison, prisoner was hooded with their hands tied behind their back and taken through a door that was hidden as a bookcase. Through the door was the gallows. The prisoners had been living right next door to the rooms where they would be executed. I felt an eerie I felt eerie standing in the cell and walking through its execution rooms. But it was when a short video played and listed the man of each listed the name of each man executed there that it really hit home to me. I have always believed that a place 
that a place can have a dark tragic a dark tragic atmosphere attached to it and this was one of the strongest strongest examples i have ever experienced it was incredible jarring standing in the room seeing the execution rope hanging in the trap door beneath the the drop didn't even look look that big enough it said the basement drop cell beneath the uh, trap door is one of is one of the most haunted areas of the prison. Well, yeah, because so many people died right there. After the most jarring part of the experience, visitors head outside to the graveyard. But now it was raining really hard. So we could not stay long outside. But we had time to visit the memorial plaque for the people that were executed at the prison. And Michael Patilli's grave, Pat, Patilli's grave, Michael was executed at the uh, prison despite being innocent of the crime he was uh, accused of committing. Next to his plaque, you can see engravings to the engravings to mark the spot where he was uh, buried. Although his remains have since been exhumed and buried elsewhere, you will never find them. Is a Crumble Road is a is Crumble Road grow haunted? Yes. No, I don't know. <laughs> <coughs> The Crumble Road Groves is is supposedly one of the one of Belfast's most haunted buildings. So much that the experience itself often runs for runs four hour paranormal investigation events. They even have a small exhibition at the jail about its paranormal history. But when I visited it was a, a work in progress. The three main paranormal hotspots of the jail are the tunnel, the execution chamber, and the D-wing. During guides or deer or tour guides have spoken about ghostly children, a boy and a girl that haunted the uh, prison, and the ghostly figures of a young girl has been caught on camera in 2016. A phantom prison prison warden has been spotted in the B wing, and a dark entity seen inside one of the padded cells in the same wing. A man was also been a man has also been seen walking through C wing, which is home to the condemned man's cell. <coughs> Finally, a gray figure has been spotted on various occasions inside the tunnel over the years even by the staff members so if you guys are ever around this place tell me about it so you can imagine this place is very 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 haunted number one because of the age of when it started and then how long it went you know and back then you know prison life was it like it is now so oh, that place has got a lot of history a lot well i'm glad you guys came by and stopped and listened to me today i'm glad i got caught up with all you guys with my ghost stories and stuff so excuse me until next time, my friends, be scary and stay out of trouble. <laughs> Just kidding. Be scary and go uh, go exploring. Go check out some of these places I talk about and report back to me. <clears throat> but until next time, be scary, my friends, and we'll see you later. Have a good one. Bye. <laughs>